Yo, what's poppin'? Welcome to Broman Brapsody. Here at Broman Brapsody, we review cars and motorcycles. I am your host for motorcycles, and the punk is your host for cars. Today, we have a 2018 Yamaha FJR 1300. In today's episode, we're gonna look around the bike, see some of the cool features, then I'm gonna take it out on the road, share my thoughts, and we'll talk about the cost of ownership and assign it a Broman score. So don't go anywhere. It's me, it's your boy bro, and I am your bro man. FJR 1300 comes in two variants. There's the 1300A and the 1300ES. This is the 1300ES. The ES stands for electronic suspension. Yes, this has electronic suspension. It comes with a few presets and then you can, you can customize it a little more. Now what's a sport touring motorcycle? You've heard about sports bikes and touring bikes. What's a sport touring motorcycle? Well, a sport touring motorcycle is a touring motorcycle which has features of a sports bike and a touring motorcycle. This combines the two. Your traditional tourers are, well, would sit much lower, have a bigger fairing, more wind protection, but they are also much more heavier and a little, a lot less powerful. And there are a few sports bike elements of this bike. This weighs only 642 pounds. It has a 60 inch wheelbase. So the FJR 1300 has a liquid cooled 1300 cc inline four engine. That puts out about 141 horses and about 100 pound feet of torque. But it also has some touring tricks up its sleeve. Uh, you have these, you have the tour pack, the saddlebags, and they have a decent amount of space in them. The seats are comfortable, the handlebars are pulled back a little bit. You have an adjustable windscreen. And this also has ABS, traction control, and cornering lights. The cornering lights is when you're into a corner, when you lean into a corner at night, the light focuses towards that side so you can look through the corner. On the front, you have the LED headlamps with the turn signals on the fender on both sides. And those side mirrors, your rear view mirrors, they're mounted on the fairing and they don't move. That's the aftermarket V-Stream windshield that's tinted. It goes up and down with the touch of a button here. The stopping power for this bike is provided by dual 320mm disc brakes with four piston brake calipers. This also has the inverted front forks. The front forks usually combine of two things. There's a bigger tube and a smaller tube. The larger tube stays, stays at one place whereas the smaller tube goes in and out. In most touring motorcycles, you have the larger tube down below and the smaller tube on top. Here it's the other way around, like sports bikes do. You have the larger tube up, tube up front and the smaller one down below. This gives the steering mount more stability and makes this bike better handling. Speaking of handling, this has a 26 degree rake angle. The shorter the rake angle, the more nimble the bike is. My Yamaha R1 has a 24 degree rake angle, this is 26. What's the rake angle? Well, if you draw a perpendicular from the steering mount and then follow the fork tube, that angle is the rake angle. Then on the, si on, on the sides you have the sa hard saddlebags. To open them, just twist this, twist the key, pull up this little lever, and then you have access to the saddlebags. Sad the saddlebags come with a little bag in them, so you, it's easy to store stuff in them. Now, I am not a big fan of saddlebags that open sideways because if you're trying to get out, get something out, it's just, stuff's just gonna start falling down. Now, these saddlebags have a cool trick to them. So once, once the saddlebags are unlocked and let's say you're walking away from the bike after parking it, after riding all day, you wanna take your saddlebags with you. And then these are the factory saddlebags. All you have to do is pull this thing up and boom, it's a suitcase that you can take with you. 
it just comes clean off the bike. How cool was that, right? You could just take your saddlebags with you. Well, the tour pack comes off in a similar fashion as well. So you could just pop all three of them off and take them with you. So this is the tour pack and this is a very decent sized tour pack. Now this bike has the Two Brothers carbon exhaust on. This thing sounds so good, so good. Man, I really love this color. <laughs> on your left hand side, you have the buttons for your high beam, low beam, passing lights, turn signals, horn, cruise control, uh, set and resume cruise control. And this is the button that helps uh, go through the menu options or this, this is also, this is something you'd use to turn on your, your heated grips, move your, and move your windshield. Over here, you have a little trigger for your menu. When you pull that, there you cycle through the menu options. On the right hand side, you have the kill switch, start, stop, the, the ride mode selector, and the hazard lights. And this is a wireless uh, wireless charging mount that the owner has installed. This is your instrument cluster here. To your left, you have your tachometer. In the middle, you have the digital speedometer. It tells you what mode you're, what mode the bike's in, the fuel gauge, the time, and these are your warning lights here. So this is neutral, ABS, and other lights here. To your right, uh, this is the screen where you can see all of your menu options and all the fun stuff. To the left of your tachometer, you have the buttons for your traction control and to reset your trip meters. Now, right now, uh, so this, this here tells you gives you information around what gear the bike's in and the other stuff and you can cycle through that right now if you look at it it's uh, it's set at that it's it's at the menu where you can adjust the height of your windshield to do that you use this button here and that'll move it up or down Now, if you pull the menu button again, this changes to your suspension settings. This has a few preloaded suspension. Uh, so you have standard and you can select what you want. You do want soft, standard, hot. You can go from standard, hard, soft, and you can also select how much uh, hard or soft you want the suspension to be. Once you get to the screen, this is where you can access your grip, uh, your heated grips. Again, to turn on the heated grips, you use, to turn on the heated grips, once you're on that menu, you use these buttons. And there are, there are three levels of the heater. So press it once, it's one, two, and that's your highest setting at three. And this brings you to the main menu. And this is where you can play around with the other options as well but you get the standard trip meter your fuel range and your odometer so there are there are two switches here to adjust your headlight to the left of the bike there's a little storage space here with a 12 volt power outlet neat this is the so these are preload settings rider with luggage just a rider or two riders or two riders with luggage. Well, now that we've looked around the bike, seen some other features, do you know what time it is? It's ride o'clock. Let's go. So first things first, we have it in sport mode. As you can see, it says S. So you can, I can flat foot it on both sides. I am 5'10 with a 31 inch inseam and I can flat foot them easily. The standard height for this, the seating height is about 30 inches. This has been lowered a little bit, so that helps. And uh, so yeah, let's start off with a little pull test and see how this thing moves, right? Shall we? Alrighty, so let's go.
<laughs> wow, 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 wow. When I rode it for the first time, I had the impression that this is a very, this is a version of a very sophisticated R1 and it sure is. It might not have the top end of an R1, but hey, this thing can move, it's just flew. So that 141 horses with the 640 pound weight, ah, oh, if you convert it to like the power to weight ratio in American ton is what, 2000 pounds? So that's about 440 horses to a ton. Pound for pound, it's got more power than the K1600 I reviewed. The K1600 weighed about 804 pounds and it was putting out 162 horses and that's a 400 horses to a ton so yeah this thing flies this thing flew <laughs> well uh we know it was fun in a straight line let's take it around a few corners and see how it does being 642 pounds you can really feel how light and how nimble and how flickable this thing is and dang these brakes are crazy so the brakes on this FJR they use the Yamaha's UBS which is the unified braking system I think and what that does is when you press on the rear brakes it uh, it activates the calipers of the rear brake and two calipers of the front brakes uh, like one on each side and when you press on the front brake lever that activates uh, the six the remaining six and when you pull the front lever that does not activate both brakes why well how else are you gonna do burnouts if you if it activates brakes for both <laughs> I like that Yamaha wanted to have wanted the folks to have some fun well, and yes, see, look, it's so well balanced. It even has Yamaha's fly-by wire technology. I think it's called YCCT. And you know, that's the fly-by wire throttle control system that adjusts how much fuel goes into the cylinders and all of that fun stuff. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I like the way Yamaha designs their bikes. Well, uh, this is a sports tourer so uh, for the touring features there are some things i really don't like about sport tourers uh not i wouldn't say not like but things i wish were better um so first thing is the wind protection yeah you have this windshield here and that helps of course but uh, when it comes to wind protection for your legs and knees and hands there isn't much because it doesn't have a big fairing or leg protection when I ride my Indian Roadmaster, I barely get any wind uh, on colder days. Not so much on this one. I get a decent amount of wind in my arms and legs and uh, arms and legs. My torso is good because of the windshield, but the rest not so much. Then gripe number two. This, uh, this does not even have a GPS or a navigation system here. At least with the K1600, it was disjointed, but you had the you had an option of a navigation that kind of hit in behind there. What most folks do on these bikes is get a get those big GPS mounts and stick them on the handlebars. Now it's functional, form uh, functionality over form, but it looks ugly when you do that. In my opinion, it, the navigation should be nicely integrated. Oh look, an airplane! <laughs> And uh, yeah, so that's grab number two. Grab number three, there is no music. You can't play music on this bike. You can play music in your helmet through your uh, Bluetooth module, uh, a Cardo, a Sena, or Euclear, whatever. But the bike does not have speakers. And uh, that kind of sucks <laughs> on a touring bike. But that's not, <laughs> like if you compare it to the K1600 that had the speakers, 
but they were not no good when you go above 50 so at least if you have no speakers you don't have anything to complain about on that end I guess uh, <laughs> and this bike also has ABS standard this has standard ABS for both front and rear brakes how cool is that and see when I'm stopped at the stoplight, this is not a heavy bike. This does not feel like a heavy bike. This is 640 pounds. Of course, it's not light. What's he talking about, bro, man? It's a six. Because I'm gonna get it in the comment section below. Like, hey, what you talking about? That's a 640 pound bike. That's not light. Yeah, you're right. But when I compare it to the Roadmaster, to my Roadmaster that I was riding, that's what a 920, 940 pound bike. This is 300 pounds lighter, and the dynamics are so different. This feels really light to me. <laughs> uh, I guess it's a bit subjective. Uh, huh. Green lot, let's go! Oh, <laughs> that exhaust, man. The Two Brothers exhaust sounds so good. Uh, it's not loud or obnoxious like the Yoshimura on my R1. This is nice. It has a deep, deep, uh, deep throaty sound to it without being obnoxious. I like it. Now, this being a touring bike, uh, uh, this being a sports tourer, do you think this... Uh, is this great for going long distance touring i think it is a lot of folks do it you can uh, you get handlebar risers to uh, move the handlebars a little more towards you so you can be a little more comfortable the seat isn't bad at all the seat is quite comfy i'm 5'10 so my legs are not bent super weird uh they're actually pretty comfortable and uh, I like this position. I like this position too. Now, a lot of you who ride sports bikes uh, would know this already. Uh, like you know, for the for motorcycles that that have a bar where you have to reach over a little bit, uh, you don't actually put all your weight on on your wrists and shoulders. You're supposed to hold the bike with your tank, uh, hold the tank, hold the bike by the tank with your legs, you know, grip them together. Uh, and you know let your lower body and core take over it and just leave this leave your hands and shoulders uh, loose so you can flick it around easier said than done takes a little practice when I started riding my R1 I couldn't look at this this puppy just loves to lean <laughs> just look where you want to go and it'll go <laughs> Yeah, this thing, this thing is definitely like a very sophisticated version of a R1. The power isn't as crazy, it's a lot more comfortable and the power is a lot more manageable. <laughs> well, don't get me wrong, this will, this will try to kill you if you let it, but as long as you're sane, <laughs> you'll be just fine. Now, could this be a good commuter bike? I think it could be. Uh, this does not feel super heavy at all. This is quite uh, light and nimble. And this could be a good commuter bike. For sure it could be. Now, can can you change... Uh, can you move the windshield while you're moving? Let's, let's find out. Oh, yeah, boy! I'm doing 54 miles an hour and I can move the windshield. <laughs> That's cool. I like it. I really do. So, does that mean that this is a good beginner bike? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. This by no way is a good beginner bike. This weighs 640 pounds. I said it feels light and nimble because uh, when I compare it to my Roadmaster, this is 300 pounds lighter. So, of course, it's going to feel a lot lighter and nimbler. Uh, shorter wheelbase and all of that. But it also has an insane amount of power and if you are not careful with it you could get into so much trouble with it it's not even funny so this is not a beginner bike by any any stretch of the imagination so why don't you guys head back to the punk and wrap up this video while i keep riding <laughs> so let's talk about the main thing shall we 
So this bike requires a, a service every 4,000 miles and the service at your local Yamaha dealer should cost you about 150. And the tire should last you about 8,000 miles. And a set of these tires front and back is about 500. So over a two year period, you would need two services and a set of new tires, assuming you're adding 5,000 miles a year. So that's gonna cost you 300 for the service and 500 for the tires, a total of 800. Divided by the number of days, it's about a dollar and 10 cents a day. So for the service, it's basically the oil and filter oil change and the oil filter change, and they're gonna check a bunch of other stuff. Uh, if you're one of those handy folks and you want to do it yourself, the DIY kind, uh, this needs a little over four quarts of oil. But be careful with the drain plug for the oil. Use a torque range and set it to 12 foot pound of torque, and that should be just fine. Now the FJR, it's a great sport touring motorcycle. It's light, it's nimble, it's fast, it's low maintenance, all of that. Now it does lack some of the features that you would get on the premium sports touring motorcycles like a BMW K1600. It does not have an integrated nav or uh, the, the screens, touch screen or speakers or any of those premium features. But you're also going to pay $10,000 less. So, nah. Is this the bike for you? Well, go out to your closest Yamaha dealer, check it out for yourself or go to one of these Yamaha demo events and check it out. There is going to be a Yamaha demo event at Wake Forest, North Carolina, Capital Power Sports on April 30th and May 1st of 2021. If you're, if you're in the area, come out, come on down there and check it out. So let's assign it a score, shall we? On the looks, it's an 8 out of 10. On the brop, it's an 8 out of 10. On the maintenance, it's 8.5 out of 10. And on the comfort, it's an 8.5 out of 10. For a combined romance score of 8.25 out of 10. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.